Welcome to the second installment in the wall unit build series. In this episode, we'll be building the liquor cabinet, as you can see on the bottom left. This will go to the left hand side of the record storage cabinet that we built in the first episode. This cabinet contains adjustable shelves, sliding doors, a pull down bar and integrated lighting that turns on when the bar is open. As with every build, we start with a plan. And then it's a matter of breaking down the plywood sheets. For this part, I'm clamping on a straight edge and then I use the circular saw to cut this into three sections. Next, I need to trim the factory edges and make sure they're nice and square. And then cut everything to length. I'm using this jig here to guide the circular saw across the pieces and this ensures that I can get a nice square cut. Now I cut everything to the final width uh, using the table saw here and I just repeat that for all of the pieces. Now I need to cut the grooves for the sliding doors to go in. So there'll be two of these side by side and there'll be matching ones on the top and the bottom of where the doors will sit. For this I'm using a trim router with an edge guide and this lets me set the depth of the doors so that they're consistent on the top and the bottom. The top of the sliding doors will sit inside a stretcher and so that is what I'm cutting here to width. There'll be a matching one at the back but that doesn't need any grooves. And then I just square everything up using a chisel. Next up I need to make some holes for the shelf pins to go into. You'll see here this jig allows me to poke a drill bit through and that sits in the last hole that I've drilled. This allows me to keep the spacing consistent across both sides. The jig I'm using here has two rows of holes. The deeper ones allow me to set the holes behind the sliding doors. Here I'm routing a dado for these stretches to sit in. I made a pretty big mistake here and measured these incorrectly. The line should have been on the other side of the first line, so I had to end up recutting these a bit later, which you'll see in the video.
This piece that I'm cutting here is for the center of the shelving that sits vertically. These pieces I'm cutting out to sit the stretches in. I'll finish this off in the vise with a dovetail saw. Here I'm making a little recess in the top of the cabinet so that you can grab the door to pull it down. Inside the main section of the cabinet will be a strip lighting of LED. For that I've decided to use some extruded aluminium to basically house that LED lighting. I'm just cutting a recess here for that aluminium strip to go in um, and then I'm just going to have to drill a hole through the end using a force snip bit to be able to put the cabling through. Now I need to make a template for the handles for the sliding doors. So I'm just using the drill press here to achieve that. I'm gonna finish this up just with a bit of hand filing to make that nice and square. Uh, and this will be used as a template for the router. Now I just attach the template to the workpiece using some double-sided tape and then I'll follow that using a flush trim bit on the router. Now all the pieces undergo a light sanding in preparation for paint. Now I'm giving all of the spotted gum veneer plywood a coat of hard wax oil. Um, I believe I did two coats here. Next we need to join everything. I'm using these right angle guides here to make sure everything is nice and square when I put it together. Uh, and here I'm just attaching the side to the base of the cabinet. The glue in hindsight was probably a little unnecessary, uh, just given that I'm putting screws in through here. It would have been nice uh, after I found my mistake later on to be able to take things apart a little bit easier, um, but I had to work around that. 
And you can see here my realization that this door is actually too short. And after about 10 minutes of freaking out, I've decided to just cut the dados at the right spot and I'm gonna fill in the gap later on with a strip of plywood. And now we're back in business with the door sliding perfectly. I soon learned that woodworking is basically just covering up your mistakes and so that's what I'm doing here. Um, certainly a very good way to learn is to make some mistakes along the way. After having a bit of a play with the way that the door was going to pull down using the recess that I cut earlier, um, I decided to add a little cove bit uh, routed section so that you can grab it easier. Here I'm installing a magnet which is going to trigger the switch um, for the LED lighting. This is in the side of the door and the reed switch will be embedded into the inside of the cabinet. I created this little proxy piece here to let me test the hinge and I soon discovered that the front was going to catch on the way down and so what I've done here is just added a round over to the bottom of the door. Here I'm cutting a slot for the reed switch which will control the light. I um, just need to make sure that that sits in there inside the side of the cabinet. And then I need to route a track for the cable to run through. You'll see here I've already done one for the actual light itself at the top and then I have the one for the switch on the side. Given that this cabinet will have another one sitting on top and to the side of it, it doesn't really matter how visible this is. I ended up covering this with some tape and painting over it because this was going to be sitting in my dining room for probably a few months until I finished those other cabinets. After attaching the door, I realized that it wasn't going to stay shut by itself. 
So what I've ended up doing is attaching, I think, four rare earth magnets into the front of the cabinet, uh, and then also some matching ones on the inside of the top. I've created a little jig just to get those in the right spot, and those were just held in with super glue.